Okay, so I had to split this video up into two parts. It was originally like 40 minutes. I tried to upload it for two days and it would not upload. So I had to split it up. This is going to be part one. I just need a video to kind of fill in while I did a voiceover because I did not feel like getting on camera. But this is part one and then I'll post part two. I'll just put part two in the beginning. Enjoy. I be seen that's the question i'm just honestly trying to get a good enough angle to where like you can see the clothes and you can see me so i'm recording on two cameras so if i stop and look here and then look here that's why because i'm trying to record on two and just see what the best angle is but hello everybody a few things that i've learned with having a clothing brand is like it's just not easy so i wanted to create a series of videos that explain and go through pretty much all the stuff that I went through when starting a line. I spent a lot of money. Uh, it costs money to make money and I live by that. But, um, oh my God, I found some money. <laughs> all right, so I just wanted to create a series of videos that kind of go through how to start a clothing line slash business. Prior to making these videos, I wanna make it very clear that there is no cut and dry, like, this is how you do it. I'm just showing videos based off of how I did it. And the more I pursue my brand and want to grow my brand, the more I learn, like there's a lot of stuff that I'm probably going to have to experience to learn. Another thing I want to kind of put out there is that a lot of this industry, and I feel like a lot of people don't talk about it because Instagram, Twitter, um, YouTube, they like to make businesses, especially clothing line businesses, seem like it's like this cut and dry, like easy to do, anybody can do a thing. And I'm probably gonna be the first YouTube channel to tell you like it's definitely not that. Um, a lot of people kind of make it seem cut and dry for content, but I'm choosing to do the direct opposite and like give you guys the real. With that, I also wanna let you guys know that in this industry, a lot of things are gate kept because it takes years to learn a lot of these things. So a lot of the things that I'm looking to kind of share on my channel um, will kind of be vague because I think when you have a brand like this, like there's so much research that you yourself, the brand owner has to do for your brand to know what works best on your brand, that giving all of the sauce on what worked for my brand may not be the best, um, may not be the best thing for me to do, right? So I want people to learn the things that I plan on teaching, but also understand that when you start a clothing line and when you start a business, like 80% of that is you figuring out your mission statement. Like, where do you see your brand? Where do you want your brand to be? All those other things. And those are services that I offer. So if you go to my website, I can walk any business through how to do that for their business. However, these series of, of videos are just going to be snippets of information that yes, I do feel like, hey, I'm gonna share with these people. Hopefully they can take it and run and start their business and do great. Boom, so I've been in business for, I wanna wrap it up to 10, but I've been in biz business for nine years and four months. And I was in business before the internet and I'll be in business shit after the internet. But I wanted to discuss just the ways in which I have produced clothing. When you start making clothes, a lot of people don't even know the basics, which is how, how do I make clothes? So I wanted to start this video off by introducing a couple ways that you can produce or manufacture clothing, okay? Some of these things can be done in your home, um, but I wanted to showcase ways in which I have produced clothing, okay? I There are so many ways and there's constantly new ways to produce clothing, but I don't like to talk about methods that I haven't used yet. Um, know that different methods work for different designs. So depending on the type of design that you have, one method might work better than the other. Another thing that a lot of people don't tell you when you own a line, you need to have multiple manufacturers. <laughs> so it's wise to produce clothing over here, over there, and everywhere. It's also wise to produce clothing different ways. You don't always have to 
and I'm gonna get into this. You don't always have to embroider, you don't always have to screen print, you don't always have to produce clothing one so, way. I wanted to start with one of the first ways that I started producing clothing. Unfortunately, I cannot find my, um, one of my favorite shirts I just wore it the other day. It's probably the washer. But I wanted to show you guys how I started producing clothing. And that's by screen printing. Boom. This is screen printing. Let me make sure this is on. This is screen printing. If you feel um, any item that's screen printed, you feel like it's like textured. It's, um, it's a water-based paint. If you ask me, my favorite way to produce clothing would be screen printing and embroidery. The issue that we have with screen printing is it's one of the most expensive ways to produce your clothing. So if you're going to screen print, you have to be mindful of things like color count and the color like shirt you're printing on, right? So I'll show you a couple examples of things that I did when I first started screen printing. So I started with shirts like this. This I made, I want to say back in maybe 2015, and I just took a black t-shirt. At the time, I was getting my wholesale blanks from Walmart, which Walmart is not, it's not a bad place to get stuff from. So if it's accessible and you can't go see a wholesaler, or you can't go to Timbuktu, you can't go to LA to go get stuff from a manufacturer, like go to Walmart. I don't understand the hoopla behind Walmart, but the quality is great. It's still great all these years later, so just find one that's in good quality. So I found a black shirt, bleached it, learned how to bleach so that it wasn't so boring. But at the time, I can only afford, I can only afford one color. And screen printing, they charge you based off of color. So I tried to maximize off of the t-shirt because I knew that I'm only going to be able to afford one color, which was Candy Girls. I don't even remember how much it costs to produce any of the stuff I'm about to show you. So this is my first Dope Boys uh, t-shirt. So this also, I tried to keep the same vibe. One, one placement, that's another charge. Once you start placing things all over the shirt, front, back, sleeve, neck, elbows, wrists, everything, you're going to, one shirt's gonna cost you $20. If that shirt costs you $20 to produce, guess how much you have to sell that shirt for? 40 45 dollars so that you can make back what you spend and make a profit so you can invest more and we'll get into that so you want to be mindful of things like placement and color when you start producing clothing because that's how they get you they can tell you oh we charge this much but once you start doing all these add-ons it goes up so this is my first dope boy line very simple boom dope boys nothing on the back and this is also screen printed Okay. The great thing about screen printing is you can wash them a million times. My God, I wish I had my other one. This is one of my first designs from 2000 and I want to say maybe 13, 14. It doesn't look a day over maybe two. <laughs> it looks the same. It, it's, it's, I, I think that extra small, I think that screen printing is just, I have a love, love relationship with it. I just don't do it too much because I use so many colors. When you use a lot of colors, it's just screen printing is just not the best, most effective, in my opinion, um, way to produce. I mean, you can if you have the funds, but since we're talking about how to start and what to do, I would not suggest the screen printing first. So um, this is also screen printed. Okay, you can hear it. Boom. This one, I tried to branch out a little bit. Um, as you can see, my shirts are from Walmart. This is still a Walmart shirt. I'm looking at it. It's a Walmart shirt. Let me make sure. Is there a tag inside? Um, this is my first time embroidering something. So I um, wasn't aware of like what embroidering was. I think this uh, individual who I went through to make this shirt introduced me to embroidering. And that's another way you learn about business. Just like, hey, have you tried this? Hey, did you try that? Hey, I have a friend that does this. So understand that a lot of figuring out business is like word of mouth and networking and back to the gatekeeping some people don't like like sharing that information because it's a work it's a lot so like i said i had to find out through another way to print clothing through somebody printing my clothing this way if that makes sense so this is screen printed it was my first time doing multiple placements we have the front we got the sides and they have definition on the back the more i look at it i'm like why didn't anybody read this it does not make sense to me. 
<laughs> it made sense to like 18 year old me but whatever so that's but that's the beauty of having a clothing line you kind of just trust the process and learn this is my first embroidery um like little placement you know front and back i don't even think i sold these shirts for what they cost to make i think i ended up like selling them for like 15 bucks or something like that so these are, <clears throat> excuse me, these are my favorite. Let me pause it so I can start again. All right, so to date, these are some of like everyone's favorite item. And I always tell myself like I'm never making them again because they took so long to make and to structure and to plan into this and to that. So this is one of the first items I made. A lot of people don't know this about me. I started sewing. Like sewing was the first thing I did for my clothing line and I taught myself pretty much. I enrolled in school so that I can, um, and this is back in 2013, I enrolled in school so I can learn how to sew, but I didn't like the pace of school. Like I'm, I'm a fast learner, so I just ended up teaching myself. So I started off by learning how to sew like with my hands and then I ended up getting help. I remember Grandma Billy, shout out to Grandma Billy. She ended up helping me with a whole bunch of these because I didn't understand how to make like my fabric stay like I would sew it on but like if you wash it or something it wouldn't stay so I ended up getting help with that so this is the item that I made I actually have a, a lot of them I sold a lot of them but I also kept a lot because like these are fire so this is what I made I screen print the front and put candy and then I sewed this is called cut and sew I cut fabric and sewed it onto the sweatshorts, made pockets. And this is, um, like I always make things where my kind of, I have a very creative brain. So I like to exercise it and use my imagination even at this age. So I wanted to try and do as many like weird things, manufactured things as possible. So I cut, sewed, and I screen print on these. This is the back. I made these, so 13, 15, 14, like, like eight, nine years ago. So they're still holding up, they look great. That's why I won't give them away, <laughs> they look great. So that's the first pair. And then this is the second pair. I feel the same. It's a back pocket. I don't have any candy on front, but I have one more pair. That's like a, um, like a Spider-Man Marvel pair that are in my washer and dryer right now so i didn't properly plan for that but with those i couldn't again tell you how much i make but if i broke it down in my head i had to pay for candy to be up front on the shorts right here so i would think that would have cost me at least 15 bucks for one color placement and then buying the actual shorts and then buying the fabric so i would think that in total probably cost me like 30 dollars to make these so i should probably be selling them or should have probably sold them at 60. you learn when you have a line and i feel like everybody has to go through this is just pricing just understanding your worth sometimes pricing can get complicated because you want to make back what you made but you also want to charge for your time and your creativity and plethora of other things and um and i feel like that's where Fashion is kind of a social experiment because it's up to you to kind of figure out those numbers. The methods we're going to kind of get through quick, hopefully. Um, but I also want to make sure I'm really educating you guys on ways to make clothing. So next we're going to talk about direct to garment. Uh, prior to direct to garment, I want to talk about what I did after screen printing. So I started screen printing in 2013 because that's what I started with. My business failed. I didn't understand. I didn't know how to screen print. Um, I was half-assed taught how to do it and, you know, I kept asking for help and the individual didn't want to really sit down and help me. So I was like, I always want to cut out the middleman. So I was kind of forced to pay somebody to screen print for me. That got expensive. I got annoyed because this costs too much and I'm not making, I don't know, pricing enough to make my money back. So I stopped and I ended up finding, um, another small business just like randomly in my hometown. And they do what's called direct to garment printing. Direct to garment printing. Ah, I didn't get into heat press. Okay, so direct to garment printing is taking your garment, printing directly from a printer to your garment. That's why it's called direct to garment printing. Before we get into that and show you everything, prior to direct to garment printing, I used to do 
what's called heat press. I used to have a heat press, but I sold it because that's a, that's that to me. If you want to know the cheapest way to make clothing, heat press is where heat press vinyl is where you should start. It's a um ah, I wish I had one. I don't. All I have is like a product I use to heat press. And um let's see. They're somewhere. Yeah. I had to just like probably buy one. But a heat press is um it's good if you have like the time it's very tedious it's very so like my designs have multiple colors right multiple colors some of them have multiple placements now if you're like me and you have characters and a whole bunch of stuff everywhere i learned that i don't like heat press i don't like using circuits where i have to pick things apart and this and that and this and scrape and that no i don't like doing that but it works for some people some people who have um one color one placement designs heat press is great so if you're looking for the cheapest way in my opinion to start a brand i would say get a heat press you can get one for a hundred dollars off amazon and you can get someone to make your design in vinyl form you can get a circuit you can make sure that you have your whole office set up with heat press and a circuit and there's your clothing line right there the next best thing for someone like me would be direct to government printing why? You're probably asking, why do I prefer direct to garment printing over literally everything else? Well, you're not charged per color. When you direct to garment print, as I said before, you're printing directly from a 3D print, like a printer. I don't know if it's a 3D printer, but you're printing directly from a clothing printer. This is a direct to garment printed item. Boom. One of my favorites, actually. Placement could have been better, but hey, this is another direct to garment printed item. So it's another direct to garment printed item. Boom, boom. Boom, hold on. I'm trying to do two things at once. Boom, direct to garment. Boom, direct to garment. Boom, direct to garment. Okay. So direct to garment to me is great because you see all these colors? Most times people want to charge you per color, <laughs> aside from placement, aside from, which is rightfully so. Um, if I can find a video, I'll place it. When you do screen printing, right, your color, your it's, it's paint. So you have what is called panels. I'll see if I can post something. Each panel has a color on it, and you have this thing called a squeegee. And depending on what your design is, you go panel by panel with the squeegee, and you, like, do your design on the shirt. So say this one has blue, green, and pink, and black, Okay. It's a five head panel. You do black first, boom, let that dry. Then you switch, boom, let's do green. Do green first, boom, let that just let that dry on, on the same design. Boom, let's do pink, boom, let that dry. Now, depending on the type of machine that you have, the process can be quick. So some people like me, I would go through people who only have like a one pan or two panel screen printing machine, meaning if this has one, two, three, four colors, and they only have a two, like a two color panel, that means it's going to take hell long to make one shirt. So that is something to consider when you're choosing your process of production, because you got to tell your customers how long it's going to take for them to get their shit. So I definitely feel like screen printing for uh, the start of a brand, not the best. Now here, as I said before, your stuff's just going through a printer. It's just like a printer, just printing on clothing, right? All your colors come out vibrant. There is a difference. There is a difference, um, a visible difference to me if you don't go through a good manufacturer to do direct to garment, okay? So when I first started getting direct to garment, these shirts are about, I would say like, I would say like maybe four years old. When I first started going through direct to garment, you could see how it fades. This is the con of direct to garment. It's gonna fade if done incorrectly, okay? Or not washed correctly, incorrectly done or incorrectly cared for. So I love direct to garment because this is another direct to garment item I've had for a long, long while, right? And you can't tell. This one, same thing. I keep showing these because it's really important to show how vibrant your colors can be if you go through the right manufacturer. So that's direct to garment. Um, 
really you can print on anything i've printed direct to garment on shorts i just showed you a sweatshirt um t-shirts you can really print on anything i have done direct to garment on pink i've done them on razorbacks that's pretty much the primary um, way of printing I have done. This was a design that I didn't even release. <laughs> I forgot I even made it. So all of this is direct to garment. None of this is, and you can do like the sky's the limit with it. Okay, I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna give a like an order of what I suggest trying. Um, when printing clothing and direct to garments definitely at the top of the list you can print literally whatever wherever okay i'll even show you different sizing my kids clothes baby clothes okay, and these are about i want to say four years old as well so now we're going to get into, yeah, these are direct to garment. I feel like I just want to show you all of them because they're all so nice. Little old. This one's old, but I keep all my old um, designs, like even if they're messy and dirty. Because one day I'll be worth millions and millions of dollars and sell these shirts. But here's the sack crown. I'm from Sacramento. My clothing lines like art. These were my closest friends at the time. So I made a shirt of us all more boom all direct to garment too like everything i'm showing still direct to garment placement as you see you've seen different placements you've seen different colors you see a whole bunch of different sizes i believe this is like a 3x probably can't tell because video kg candy girls gang my dope boys and then i made a trap star line some years ago it did all right <laughs> All right, so now we're going to pause and restart.